Introduction to Dialectics by Theodore Adorno. This is Lecture 1, May 8th, 1958. The concept of dialectic, which we shall explore here, has nothing to do with the widespread conception of a kind of thinking which is remote from the things themselves and revels merely in its own conceptual devices. Indeed, at the point in philosophy where the concept of dialectical or dialectic first emerges in the thought of Plato, it already implies the opposite, namely a disciplined form of thought which is meant to protect us from all sophistic manipulation. Plato claims that we can say something rational about things only when we understand something about the matter itself. In its origin, the dialectic is an attempt to overcome all merely conceptual devices of spurious argumentation, and precisely by articulating conceptual thinking in a truly rigorous fashion. Plato attempts to counter his opponents, the sophists, by use of their own means. All the same, the concept of dialectic, as it has come down to us from classical thought, is very different from what I mean by the term. For the ancient concept of dialectic is the concept of a philosophical method, and to a certain extent, this is what it has always remained. Dialectic is both. It is a method of thought, but it is also more than this, namely a specific structure which belongs to the things themselves, and which for quite fundamental philosophical reasons must also become the measure of philosophical reflection itself. What dialectic means for Plato is that a philosophical thought does not simply live there where it stands, as it were, but continues to live when it informs our consciousness without our realizing it. Platonic dialectic is a doctrine which enables us to order our concepts correctly, to ascend from the concrete to the level of the highest and most universal. In the first place, the ideas are simply the highest general concepts to which thought can rise. On the other hand, dialectic also implies that we can subdivide these concepts correctly. This question regarding the correct division of our concepts brings Plato to the problem of how to articulate concepts in such a way that they are appropriate to things which they encompass. On the one hand, what is required is the logical formation of concepts, but this must not be achieved in a coercive way in accordance with some schema. Rather, the concepts must be formed in a way that is appropriate to the thing in question. This may be compared to the botanical system of Linnaeus and the natural system based upon the structure of plants. The old traditional concept of dialectic was essentially a method for organizing concepts. On the other hand, Plato was already well, well aware that we do not simply know without more ado whether the conceptual order we bestow upon things is also the order which the objects themselves possess. Plato and Aristotle emphasized the importance of framing our concepts in accordance with nature, so that these concepts might properly express what it is they grasp. But how can we know anything about the non-conceptual being that lies beyond these concepts? We realize that our particular concepts become entangled in difficulties. Then, on the basis of these problems, we are obliged, obliged to develop a more adequate body of concepts. This is the fundamental experience of dialectic, the way our concepts are driven on in the, in the encounter with what they express. We must try and compare whether what is given corresponds to the relevant concepts or not. The dialectic is indeed a method which refers to the process of thinking but it also differs from other methods insofar as it constantly strives not to stand still, constantly corrects itself in the presence of the things themselves. We could define dialectic as a kind of thinking which does not content itself merely with the order of concepts, but rather undertakes to correct the conceptual order by reference to the being of the objects themselves. The vital nerve of dialectical thinking lies here, in this moment of opposition, Dialectic is the reverse of what it is generally taken to be. Rather than being simply an elaborate conceptual technique, it is the attempt to overcome all merely conceptual manipulation, to sustain at every level the tension between thought and what it would, and what it would comprehend. 
Dialectic is the method of thinking, which is not merely a method, but the attempt to overcome the merely arbit arbitrary character of method and to admit into the concept that which is not itself concept. On the issue of exaggeration, it is claimed that truth must always represent the simpler or primitive level, while what is more remote can only be a further arbitrary addition. This view assumes that the world is the same as the facade it represent or it presents. Philosophy should fundamentally contest this idea, the kind of thinking which shuns the effort to overcome inveterate ideas is nothing but the mere reproduction of what we say and think without more ado. Philosophy should help us to avoid becoming stupid. In a conversation with Goeth, Hegel once described dialectic as the organized spirit of contradiction. Every thought which breaches the facade or the necessary illusion which is ideology is an exaggeration. The tendency of dialectic to move to extremes serves today precisely to resist the enormous pressure which is exerted upon us from without. The dialectic realizes that it furnishes thought on the one hand and that which thought strives to grasp on the other. Dialectical thought is not merely intellectualist in character since it is precisely thought's attempt to recognize its limitations by recourse to the matter itself. How does thought succeed within its own thought determinations in doing justice to the matter? In the phenomenology, Hegel claims that immediacy returns at every level of the movement which thought undergoes. Again and again, thought encounters a certain opposition, encounters what can be called nature. An introduction to the dialectic can only be pursued in constant confrontation with the problem of positivism. Such an introduction cannot proceed as if the criteria of positivism had not been developed. On the contrary, we must attempt to measure them against themselves and thereby move beyond their own concept. Positivism is not a worldview, but rather an element of dialectic.